Here we go, people. The end is soon. Coming from Israel 365 News, Jews begin building third temple on Israel Independence Day. Go and say to my servant David, thus said Hashem, are you the one to build a house for me to dwell in? Samuel 7.5 While most Israelis were celebrating Independence Day by having family barbecues, a small group gathered in the old city of Jerusalem and began chipping away at stones, preparing them to be used to build the prophesied third temple. And here's a quote from Rabbi Lippo who was chipping away at the stones. We have a mitzvah, Torah commandment, to build the temple. This mitzvah is not conditional or time-bound. We have this requirement at all times, so it is a pity that we are not actively engaged in it. Right now, it is politically complicated for us to begin building on the Temple Mount, but that does not exempt us from this mitzvah. All of the rabbis we consulted agreed that we should begin preparing the stones, Lippo said. This wasn't just a physical action to produce dress stones. We had to be very careful about our intentions. Of course, this was not a political statement. The intention was to unify the Jews and all of the world in making God one and his name one. The unifying identity of the Jewish people is expressed in the temple in Jerusalem, Rabbi Lippo explained. On this day, 74 years ago, Israel became a state, but the essence of the nation is the temple in Jerusalem. This was an important act unto itself and a message to the nation as well as to the world, but it was also a message to Hashem that we were not just sitting around waiting for the Messiah, Wander told Israel 365 News. We had the intention to show that we are actively working to bring the third temple as prophesied and as commanded. And lastly, the current situation in which Israel is a beautifully developed country while the Temple Mount is under the control of the Palestinians is similar to the situation described by the prophet Haggai. Is it a time for you to dwell in your paneled houses while the house is lying in ruins? Haggai 1.4 So let's look at three verses from scripture that has to do with the third temple. And that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, the Antichrist, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Daniel 9.27 And he, the Antichrist, shall confirm the covenant with many for one week or seven years, and in the midst of the week he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease, and that sacrifice and oblation occurs in the temple. And lastly, Matthew 24 when ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet stand in the holy place, which is the third temple. The third temple will truly be built soon. Israel and what happens in Jerusalem is God's time clock. What happens in Israel affects the entire world. Shalom, Kahala, Yahweh, Bashim, Yavshai, Bashim, Kokodash, double honors my teachers, the apostles, and elders of the great millstone, peace and mercy to the elect. Where the house of David will be born again in this generation. And Shalom to the 130 Yashurala, who today are known as the Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, who before losing our true heritage, we were known as and still are the true Hebrew Israelites of the Holy Bible. In today's lesson, we're going to talk about the third temple which these heathens are trying to build in, in a and explain how that is not biblical at all now as you heard from that guy in the beginning video the so-called Jews who are in the land right now of Israel are attempting to build the prophesied third temple which the Lord uh, said he would build okay now first of all there's going to be no physical third temple being built, okay? And the scriptures that that guy quoted about the so-called Antichrist, right, is, is off, right? Those scriptures had nothing to do with an Antichrist or really the third temple, okay? They had to do with either the destruction that took place during the 70 AD destruction of the Herod's temple, which is the second temple, which is a really... The temple of god right uh, it was a temple built by heathens uh, in the place of where the original temple was at and we're gonna go over that in just a bit and also the third temple it's not physical all right it's it's in fact it is the uh combination of the elect the hundred and forty four thousand plus the one-third of israel that is the third temple but 
Before we get into that, let's go ahead and uh, read this. This is Psalms 50 and 16. But unto the wicked God saith, What hath thou to do to declare my statutes? Or that thou shouldest take my covenant in thy mouth? Seeing thou hatest instruction and casteth my words behind thee, when thou sawest the thief, then thou consenteth with him, and hath been partakers with the adulterers. Thou givest thy mouth to evil, and thy tongue frameth deceit. And that's exactly what these devils, these so-called Jews, these Israelis, have done. They have framed deceit with their mouth. Okay, uh, as you can hear, read here, it says, Zuhat uh, Figlin says he wants to build a third temple right away. Chairman of the far right party, which is enjoying growing popularity, is a longtime advocate of Jews' rights on Temple Mount and has called for increased Israeli control over the site. Now, these devils here, they believe that if they build a physical third temple, that that will make the Most High return, right? Or that that will make the their Messiah appear. But again, just like the guy in the very beginning of the video, and just like these devils here, uh, they're totally off, okay? There isn't just one Antichrist, but it is a whole people, right? And pretty much the whole world, which is Antichrist. Again, if you're against this truth, which the Bible speaks of, you are an Antichrist, okay? There's, there's not going to be one man who comes who has 666, you know, imprinted on his, you know, under his hair and stuff. No, and that's not it, right? The, the, the Antichrist, the, the first and foremost, are the so-called white people, okay? The Caucasian race, the nation of Edom, who are predominantly uh, go against God and everything that he, that the Bible says, right? Everything the Bible says to do, these people are against it, right? They go, everything, it's, it's crazy, man that people can't see this, but they're starting to, okay? Now, as the, the guy said, these devils have actually started to chip away and create stones, right? Dress stones so that way they can actually put a temple together. Now, this right here is just pretty much a bunch of pub publicity, right? Because if you've been following th this truth for the last few years, you know that the third temple organization who is behind this they've you know been gathering little by little they've been raising up red heifer cows and they they always declare to the world that there's a you know a, 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 a red cow that without blemish which is needed to basically uh um, burn and do a burnt sacrifice onto the lord but see the thing is is these devils uh you know they know that the lord no longer uh takes burnt offerings right he says that he is uh he no longer uh will will accept the burnt offering of the and basically and also besides that these people here aren't even levites they're not even jews right these are edomites right the adversaries to the israelites okay the adversaries of the jews pretending to be the jews okay and how do we know this well there's a prophecy that tells you that the real Israelites will not be in the land of Israel until the second coming of the Messiah, right? This is Luke 21 and 24. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword, right? talking about the Israelites, and shall be led away captive into all nations. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down by the Gentiles until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Right? And who are these Gentiles? Well, that's these so-called Jews, these Israelis and those palestinians which again the israelis are edomites right the, the descendants of esau and the palestinians are the descendants of ishmael right the arabs okay these are the gentiles who are trotting down jerusalem until the time of the gentiles be fulfilled now what does this mean that the times of the gentiles be fulfilled right that means this current age this kingdom this disposition of time which we are currently living in. When the, when the second coming of the Messiah comes, 
That is when the time of the Gentiles will be finally fulfilled. Their empire will be done for. So again, the people who are building this supposed third temple, who are in the land of Israel today, who are pretending to be these, the, the, the Jews, are in fact Malachites, right? Which is the top tribe of Edom. Okay, so they're ultimately Edomites, but when you want to get specific, you would refer to these Israelis as Amalekites, right? It tells you here, it says, Amalekites, the so-called Jewish people of today, are biblically known as the nation of Am Amalekites, who are the descendants of Amalek, the first grandson of Esau, which makes them the head tribe of the Edomites, right? And if you look here, this is a, a basically a, a, a an imprint from the King, King James Version the KJV Bible, the 1611, that has the family tree, right? It shows Esau, who uh, got with Ada. They had Eliphaz. Eliphaz got with a, with his. I um, think she was a, she wasn't a prostitute. She was a, basically a, one of the women that you get with. What's the term? Concubine, right? She was a concubine, right? Tima, and she, and Eliphaz had. Amalek, right? And you know about Amalek by reading Exodus 17, where uh, uh, the prophet Samuel hewed him to pieces, right? Well, from Amalek come the Amalekites, who, uh, when you look at today, the, the Amalekite descendants are the so called uh, Jews, right? And these are the people who basically run the world along with their uh, brethren, the Edomites, right? The other basically Caucasian race because again ultimately they're all the same people except for these Malachites pretend to be in a separate race they pretend to be the Jews okay and uh, if you want to get more into that you could read the book by an Amalekite himself Arthur Kostler who ultimately was killed for coming out with this truth right this book called the 13th tribe and these devils have tried to try to uh, um, say this book isn't right and that it's all a bunch of um, anti-Semitic lies and everything, but it's true, right? It's facts, historically verifiable facts. It tells you that the Edomites came from the Caucasus Mountains, which we understand that they were the pagan Romans who fled up to the Caucasus Mountains once uh, the Israelites, who were taken to Rome as slaves, ultimately climbed up the social ladder and, and ultimately ended up ruling uh, um, Rome, right? That took place around 400 AD. Now, that being said, let's read this. This first Ezra 4 and 45. Thou also hast vowed to build up the temple which the Edomites burnt when Judea was carried, was made desolate by the Chaldees, right? And this is talking about when the Babylonians, right? The Chaldeans, because right, Chaldeans are ultimately the descendants of, of, of Nimrod and the Babylonians, right? They're, they're kind of like the, the top uh, wizards within Babylon, right? So this is talking about when the Babylonians came to the Southern Kingdom and ultimately destroyed destroyed Judea, right? Like, as, like the scripture says, that they made Judea, right? The Southern Kingdom of Israel desolate. And as you can see in this depiction, not only did they destroy the city, but they burnt or they destroyed and looted the temple. They took back all the, 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 the goods from the temple, right? And they carried away the majority of the Southern Kingdom. Now they left people there, people of no regard, but they took away the nobles the, and people of, 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 of renown into Babylon in captivity, right? This is where Daniel's in Babylon and you hear about the story of him in the lion's den and all that stuff. Well, again, when that happened, as it, I just read, right? It tells you here, it says, thou hast vowed to build up a temple which the Edomites burnt, right? So these devils, these, these Edomites, these Amalekites, who are now trying to build the third temple, they're the ones who basically burnt down the original temple, right? And when they burnt down the original temple, they did that when, when uh, the, the Babylonians came and destroyed 
uh, the southern kingdom, okay? And here you see a, a, a stele, relief of the Babylonians taking away the southern kingdom uh, Israelites, right? The so-called Negroes into Babylon, right? And, and uh, let's read this. This is Psalms 137 and 7. Remember, O Yahweh the children of Edom in the day of Jerusalem, who said, raise it, raise it, even to the foundations thereof, right? And that basically means destroy it, destroy it, right? O daughter of Babylon, who art to be destroyed, happy shall he be that rewardeth thee as thou hast served us. Happy shall he be that taketh and dasheth thy little ones against the stones, right? And ultimately, this is going to be the, the future judgment of these Edomites, right? Babylon, the daughter of Babylon, is America, right? So this is a future prophecy that's ultimately going to come back to boomerang on these Edomites who ultimately destroyed uh, um, the temple, okay? And not only that, but over time, see, they destroyed King Solomon's temple, which is the rightful and only temple that the Lord ever made. Um, had had commanded to be made okay and after this was destroyed right the southern kingdom went into captivity let's go ahead and uh look at this at uh, the bible timeline right we'll go into <coughs> there goes the northern kingdom got taken into captivity and then you fast forward to 597 to 586 bc this is when Babylon came up against the southern kingdom and took away the southern kingdom Isra Israelites, the so-called Negroes, right? Which would be the tribe of Levi, the tribe of Benjamin, and the tribe of Judah, right? And took them away to Babylon. Now, after that, what had happened is when you go through the Bible timeline, ultimately, right, you, you uh, have the story of Ezra, right? In, in the book of uh, Second Ezra, uh, where he's given back the Bible by the angel. And also, they're ultimately, him and Zerubbabel are going back to the land of, of Israel, right? Because they were permitted to go back by, by the Persians who had conquered Babylon. Well, that being said, let's continue, go on and on. You get into the book of Nehemiah, right? Where Nehemiah rebuilt the, the temple and the walls, right, to, to a point. Uh, where it's usable again, right? Now, here's the thing. Now, after that takes place, then this is when the Edomites start coming onto the scene fairly aggressively, right? You have, um, they basically take over the Greek Empire. Alexander the Great uh, shows up, right? He comes and conquers uh, Israel, introduces himself to the uh, the the priests who were in the temple and again remember this temple had just been rebuilt but again it was still in a lowly state okay uh, the the uh, Greek Empire or the neo Greek Empire gets split into four which is as you can see here it's split up into four ways and the point being is let me see uh, where is it you get into the book of the Maccabees, right? Right here is where you see the ultimate kind of like final nail get put into the coffin of, of, uh, of, of dominance in the land of Israel. After this, for the most part, Edom, for the most part, conquers Israel, right? And they kill off the the last, you know, I guess you could call them so, you know, who would be kings, right? Because the Maccabees, they were, because uh, again, at this time, there was no kings in the land of, 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 of Israel, right? And the Maccabean family, they were seen, or the Hasmonean dynasty, which is where their, you know, their family is referred to, they would be what you would consider as kings, right? But they were like the unofficial kings. Well, unfortunately, through the treachery of Edom, they were all, all the males of the Maccabean family were, were killed off, and Herod, a devil, the so-called uh, um, Jew, right, an Edomite, there you go, uh, a so-called Jew who married in 
to the Maccabean uh, family by marrying the women of the Maccabean family, declared himself to be the basically the ruler, the, the ruler of the Jews, right? Herod the Edomite marries into the Maccabean line to rule over Israel. And this takes place around 29 BC, okay? And in doing so, this devil builds up the, the, the huge temple, which is right here. And he does it uh, in, in a way. Now, just to let you know, man, that the Lord, that this temple that, that Herod built up, um, the Lord wasn't even uh, uh, about it, man. You know, you know, yes, it, it, you know, the priests, you know, taught there and they performed rituals there. But the, this is a temple that was built by heathens, an Edomite, okay? And, and ultimately, these devils themselves, these Roman Edomites, that eventually ended up destroying this in 70 AD, which this famous image here depicts. Now, going forward, let's go ahead and read how not anybody can just build the temple to the Lord, right? There, you have to be chosen, right? Because, for example, right here, the Lord had told King David that he was not permitted to build the temple to, to the Lord because of his deeds. Let's read it. This is First Chronicles 22 and 8. But the word of Yehovah Bashim Hashai came to me, saying, Thou hast, thou hast shed blood abundantly, and hast made great wars. Thou shalt not build a house unto my name, because thou hast shed much blood upon the earth in my sight. Right? But here it goes. Behold, verse 9, Behold, a son shall be born to thee, who shall be a man of rest, and I will give him rest from all his enemies round about. For his name shall be Solomon, or peace, right? And I will give peace and quietness unto Israel in his days. He shall build a house for my name, and he shall be my son. And I will be his father, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom over Israel forever. Now, my son, Yahweh Shemashai, be with thee and prosper thou and build the house of the Yahweh Shemashai, thy power, as he hath said of, said of thee. So you, you see that? The Lord made it very clear that not anybody can build the temple to him, okay? In this case here, he rejected King David, who was a man of his own heart, right? And why is that? That's, thou hast shed blood abundantly and has made great wars who does that sound like that sounds exactly like esau man do you know how much blood these devils have shed and how many wars they've started america has had more years of war than peace right and say and, and that goes double for the land of israel and the israelis that are in that land man right so so you know do you think these devils are are righteous enough or ordained to, to build a third temple to the Lord? Hell no. And this is right here shows you what happened when heathen tried to come and build the temple with us to the Lord, right? And, and let's read it. This is, uh, we start off on one. This is Ezra's four and one. Now, when the adversaries of Judah and Benjamin heard that the children of the captivity built the temple onto Yahweh, power of Israel then they came to Zerubbabel and again if you're unsure who Zerubbabel is he was basically King David in the reincarnation Zerubbabel was seen as the the, the de facto leader of the Israel in, in this time when Israel had no kings right this is after the southern kingdom had been uh, permitted to go back into the land of Israel right Zerubbabel being of, of uh, King David's bloodline and and fun and you know coincidence enough he was King David in the reincarnation what did he say or what happened it says then they came to Zerubbabel and to the chief of the fathers and said unto them let us build with you for we seek your power as ye do and we do sacrifice unto him since the days of Asher Shahardan 
king of Ashur, which brought us up hither, right? And this is talking about the heathen that were brought into the land of the northern uh, uh, northern tribe, right? Tribes, the, the kingdom of Israel, the, the northern kingdom, right? When they took the, the Latinos, Native Americans out of the land of Israel, the Assyrians that is, well, they replaced them with other heathens. Well, that's who this is talking about, right? That's who these people were. But Zerubbabel and Jeshua and the rest of the chief of the fathers of Israel said unto them, Ye have nothing to do with us to build the house unto our power, but we ourselves together will build unto Yahweh Bashimashai, power of Israel. And as King Cyrus, the king of Persia, hath commanded us. Right? And you see that? So that right there is the same sentiment that we ourselves have today, right? The brothers, me, the brothers, and the apostles who are out here teaching this truth, right? When these Christians and these Edomites and these other heathens, when they try to come up, you, you'll see it happen once in a while, right? They'll want to come up and they'll want to start fellowshipping. They'll want to start seeing, getting, becoming a part of what we're trying to do. But we tell them this isn't for them, right? They'll start asking questions. Well, what is this? You know, how can I join? You can't join Esau, right? You, <laughs> it's a party and you can't come, right? So the thing is, man, is, is that's the same sentiment that Zerubbabel and the other uh, leaders of Israel had at that time. And that's the truth of what's happening now, right? So the real temple that's being built right now, which is the rebuilding of the people, right? Because again, the people are the, are, are, are the, are the temple, the, the, the Israelites, the Negro, Latino, Native Americans, the one third, we are that temple, right? And when these heathen try to come up to us, when we're prophesying, we're teaching, we tell them this isn't for them and we ignore them or we, you know, basically shun them away because again, they have nothing. What does it say? Ye have nothing to do with us to build the house of our power, right? This is why we don't care what they say. We don't need their affirmation. We don't need them to, to um, you know, that verify any information that, that, that we've researched ourselves because they're not the authority. Okay. Let's read this. This is 1 Maccabees 3 and 48. And laid open the book of the law wherein the heathen had sought to paint the likeness of their images. Right. So this right here demonstrates how these heathens have for for a very long time always tried to be part of this truth of ours man as apostle Gabar says man this thing of ours right because this truth the bible right and the the promises which were given to abraham isaac and jacob belong to us the negroes latinos the native americans we are the meek of the world we are the meek that shall inherit the earth okay this is first corinthians 3 and 16 know ye not that you or that ye are the temple of god and that the spirit of god dwelleth in you and that's the truth that's the bottom line that is the true third temple that is being built right now as i speak right and you hearing these words and you being built up in the spirit you are becoming lord willing a a, a stone a lively stone for the temple for the spiritual temple that the Lord is building right now, right? In the rebuilding of the nation of, of Israel, Yasharala, we are the third temple, Akim. And this is the truth. So when you hear stories about these devils building the third temple, they're carving stones, they're making the, the brass and gold ornaments, and they have the, the red heifers, and they're making little sacrifices. That's the heathen raging, man. That's The scripture says, why do the heathen rage? That's what that's talking about, man. They're simply just trotting down the land of Israel and they're doing they're doing crazy work over there, man, which is not going to prosper them because, again, they have been blinded and we have been made aware and awoken to this truth. We've been quickened to what's really going on. So, Kahalaya Hawabashan al Jai, that he has, has had mercy upon us and that, he, Lord willing, he uses us to build up that third spiritual temple, which, again, is not a physical temple but it is the rebuilding of the nation the people of yasharala the negroes latinos and native americans back into their original national identity of 
being the nation of Israel, right? So hopefully this video was edifying. Not until the next time. I want to give all honor and glory and praises to Yahweh Bashem Yahushai, Bashem Rukhab Radash. Double honors, my teachers, the apostles and elders of the Great Millstone. Peace and mercy to the elect. Shalom.